Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. I recently did a video ranking my artist grade watercolors from best to worst, and I thought it would be fun to do the same thing with my student grade watercolors. So that's what this video is gonna be about. If you're interested in what quality student watercolors are out there and what you might wanna purchase for yourself or for a gift, then stick around. We're gonna start with the best and then we'll work our way to what I think is not the best. And of course, if there's anything really horrible, I would have gotten rid of it. So, um, so just gotta keep that in mind. And uh, let's get right into it. I'm gonna push this right up in front of me so I can have one swatch at a time on the table. My number one student grade watercolor is a tube set from Art Whale. And uh, this is a wonderful little gem. I found this on Amazon a couple years ago. And you get 24 15 ml tubes. And I did notice they've released a smaller set since then. And at the time I paid around $35 for it. I think it rain, runs around 40 typically, but sometimes it goes on sale and I've seen it as cheap as $21. So you get big tubes. The colors are rich and vibrant. They layer well. You've got some nice granulating colors. They dry down well in a palette. And um, this is my number one pick for student grade watercolors. The price is good. The quality is good. I think these are made by Superior, which is a pretty decent student grade uh, paint maker from China. Um, but yeah, this is just, this would be my absolute number one pick. This is really close to professional grade, in my opinion, like a lower end professional grade, but you really can't go wrong with the Art Whale watercolor tube set of 24 uh, for around $40 or so. And I'm gonna say the prices that I paid on these, or at least the prices that they were when they were released, just so if you get excited and you go for it and you, let, and you see this paint, and you go to buy it and it's like $80, you'll know that you're paying too much. So, uh, so kind of keep that in mind. So that's Art Whale, number one. Uh, my next pick would be the Miliang watercolors, also known as the Pretty Excellent watercolors. It's a tin that looks like this that you can find on Amazon. I paid $20, uh, oh gosh, probably like seven years ago on Amazon, and these are wonderful. They now have a 36 set, so it's those colors plus 12 metallics. And uh, it's just a really, really beautiful range of colors. I'll show you here because I think I have uh, layered swatches here just to give you a good idea of what you have but these perform really well they're great to paint with and uh, you get a palette so you don't have to go get an extra palette or anything it comes with a water brush but I'd put a regular brush in there but this makes an excellent gift for a crafter or a new watercolorist uh, again they feel very professional quality they're made by the same company that makes Paul Rubens and they are just a wonderful a wonderful paint this next one is a really high quality student grade set but uh, it's kind of hard to find, but if you do see it and you find it for a good price, I highly recommend it. It's the Mission Gold Silver Class. So you've probably heard of Mission Gold Class. This is Mission Silver Class by Magello. Not Mission Gold, it's Mission Silver Class. The Gold Class is the professional. Um, there's only 20 colors in the range, I believe. I've got the, my brochure here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, there's only tw uh, 20 colors plus I guess four neons, which I don't know where those come from, but these are a Korean made paint. This is what the palette looks like. Mine's a little stained up, and uh, but the pans are really big and the mixing space is really big in this palette. Um, if you can find it for a reasonable price, I would say go for it. This was actually sent to me from the uh, one of the distributors of this paint and, um, and it's really nice, I really like it. I keep my swatch right in here. I didn't have it swatched out anywhere else, but there's good flow, good color payout, just a wonderful, wonderful student grade paint if you can find it reasonably. The next one um, is kind of a funny one, and this would be if you really like inky, super, super transparent watercolors. These are by Koi Noor. They're the Mikador for artist sets. They come in these little discs of paint, and um, they come, you can get a set that's got, uh, I think, um, let's see, it's got six times six, so 36 colors, or you can get these tw uh, six color, I think they're, six color sets that are like winter, spring, fall, summer. They are just so vibrant, so transparent. It makes me think they're probably dye-based. They're really fun to work with. They do work with salt. They mix beautifully. They're just a really fun paint. They kind of remember what, they kind of remind me of what I think ink tents paints should be like, but ink tents paints are actually a little bit more opaque. These are super duper transparent and they're a lot of fun. And if you like that, I highly recommend them. They're the inkiest watercolors I've ever used. They're almost like um, like Peerless or Viviva color sheet type watercolors. They're a really great, great option. But they're probably not light fast. And I'm not sure if they're similar to the black discs that Koinor has or not, but those are the white disc ones under the Mikador brand. 
This next one's kind of uh, um, it's kind of an odd recommendation because they're not that traditional as far as watercolors go. But these would be the um, yeah, well, they go under many different names. They go under the name um, Mungio is the maker, but then they make paints for all kinds of other brands. So like they make the Jane, well, allegedly they make the Prima uh, watercolor confections, the Jane Davenport watercolors, and of course their own set. And if you want to save some money and get all the colors and don't get duplicates, you could get the Mungio set of 48 watercolors. And that's going to have all of these colors. Now there are some pastels and vintage colors and stuff you can get through Prima, but uh, I would probably recommend this set if you can just pick one, because for about $40 you get 48 colors and they have a lot of flow. They're very vibrant. This is best for one layer paintings or if you're just doing wet to wet or loose florals, things like that where you just want your paint to flow. These flow amazingly. They flow kind of like the core watercolors, but they don't layer well because they want to lift they want to lift up on you. So um, if you like to do those kind of like a kind of one stroke type flowers, loose flowers where you're letting the colors kind of bleed into each other, this is a set for you. They're really good for that, but not great for layering. So just keep that in mind. If you like to putter around and spend a lot of time on a painting, do lots of layers, don't get these. But if you want your paint to flow and you want them to just, you love those little bur those wild bursts of color when you're working, these are the paints for you. Or the Primo Marketing or the Jane Davenport paints. They're all very, 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 very similar. But I would avoid their metallics. The, uh, the, the Prima metallics are just kind of boring. The shimmering light ones, their actual metallics are quite nice. I can do a video on my metallics if you want. I actually, you know what? Never mind. I do have a whole blog post on my metallics and I don't think many have been added since, um, since I did that blog post. So just look for the metallic showdown on my blog. I've got a YouTube video as well. So you can check that out if you want. I'm going to turn that this way. This paint uh, was very surprising to me. This is called Shinhan Professional, but it's not their professional paint. Their professional paint is actually the PWC or SWC. This professional is actually their student grade. So I'm using professional with air quotes, but still it's actually a really decent paint. Um, there, it's a little bit on the opaque side, which is kind of typical for, um, uh, for Korean paints. Well, I would say because a lot of Asian paints are meant to be used on unsized paper or rice paper, so they tend to be a little bit thicker. So these do have some opacity to it, but they actually flow decently. The colors are really vibrant. Um, I think they have pigment information on them. They have light fast information on them. Uh, they're, um, I think they're decent there and they're pretty affordable. I got the set of 30 for $25. They've gone up though since I've got mine and now they have a 40 or 48 set for like $55 or something. So I still think the price is fair. I would go with the Art Whale before I'd go with these tubes, but they're definitely a good option if you want that variety of color. Art Whale just has 24 colors, um, but I do think Art Whale is a better paint. But um, this is a good option if you want something bright that's not too expensive, as long as you know you get a good price. This next one's going to be a little controversial because I'm sure some people would put this in the professional range, but um, I'm going to put it in the student range because it is more affordable and um, I don't think there's any pigment information on these paints. And this would be the Kiritaki Ganzai Tambi paints. Now this swatch actually hung on my wall with my studio lights for years. And I might have faded a little bit, but not too bad because um, I didn't do the I didn't do mass tone swatches. I just kind of wet the squares and put the color in. This was the 24 regular set and this is a 24 um, Art Nouveau set, which I'm having a ball painting this Art Nouveau set. They are really nice paints. They're in these really big pans. They have um, the set of 48 traditional colors have um, these 24 plus 24 others. And then this is an additional 24 to that, but the one in the 48 sets, more your vibrant colors. They're, they're good. I love the big pans. You can fit big brushes in there. They will get a little glossy if you use them really thickly, but if you're using them um, like you would watercolors, they're really not that, uh, not gonna be shiny on you. Um, they're not a traditional watercolor though. They are a Gansai paint, which is meant for like rice paper and stuff. But as far as an affordable, high quality student grade watercolor, I think they work really well for that, that, that too. And since they work good on unglazed paper, on unsized paper, you can use them for card making and not have a big issue if you're coloring stamp designs, except they can be a little bit more opaque than other brands, uh, but they'll be easier to control and less apt to feather on your uh, cardstock and cheaper paper. So um, that's how I rate that one. All right, moving along, my next, uh, working working down from best to worst, my next one would be the Marie's Masters watercolor. And I really, really like this 
uh, like this paint. This is a fairly new one to the scene. Now, this is not the Marie's watercolor that we have, that you've probably all tried, that smells weird, like chemicals that you've seen at Christmas Tree Shop or Ocean State Job Lot or any of the craft stores. The Marie's Masters watercolor are different. They are much better quality. Uh, they're more transparent. They have more pigment to them. They actually have pigment information on the tubes and they're uh, they're more expensive. So a set of, uh, I think by the tube, I got like these three colors on sale for a dollar, no, was it two? Two seventy five per tube. Uh, when they first, when I first saw them. And I picked um, like a Hansi yellow, uh, scarlet or crimson and ultramarine blue just uh, just to try it out because I didn't want to spend a lot of money and be disappointed and I loved these and then um, my friend Ophelia had a bunch of these in tubes and she's like do you want them I don't even use them anymore and so I said sure and then um, I did the swatch here I think the hearts I put hearts on ones that are single on this, no I must put hearts on ones that are on a set or something maybe that are in, in a set they have sets in open stock at Jerry's. I think I would go open stock because some of the colors are quite similar. Um, the white is not very pigmented, but you can get your basic colors here. You definitely are not going to be put behind the eight ball learning how to mix with these. If you want a tube set of paints, I think this is a good option, but make sure it's the Marie's Masters watercolor and not just the Marie's watercolor because the regular Marie's one are awful, but the Marie's Masters are really good. So um, I highly recommend these. Jerry's Artorama has the best price. You can get them on Amazon, but you have to get them in like sets of six, like six ye different yellows and six different reds. And it's um, it's not that convenient. I would definitely get them at Jerry's when they go on sale or get them in a set if that goes on sale. But like this is the Marie's Master watercolor and this is Phoenix, which is, um, which I kind of wondered if they were the same. So I swatched them both out and the Marie's was definitely much more pigmented. So this is an excellent buy if you want a tube watercolor. Uh, I don't think it's as good as the Art Whale, but it's pretty close. It's really good. I like this. Actually, I like this one better than the Shinhan, but it is more expensive if you're getting a set and a little bit harder to come by because you're going to be... I think Jerry's is the only one that sells it. And Jerry's is a seller through Amazon too. But anyway, that's a really good one to, uh, to go for. This next one is... Um, I, I have to be... I'm wondering about this one because... I think they might have changed since they were first released. This is a Sennelier La Petite Aquarelle set of 24 half pans. This paint is available in tubes or pans and I got this when it first came out. This was several years ago. The colors were vibrant. They re-wet immediately. They were just beautiful paints and they were fun to work with. They were, felt really good to paint with. I loved them. I recently just saw um, Miranda Wilson, Miranda Watson review the this uh, line of paint and they did not look the same at all. They looked very weak. So I don't know if she got a bad batch or they've changed their formulation over the past few years. But um, but anyway, they at the time that I bought these, they were they were excellent. So I'm hoping they're still excellent because they are probably my favorite legacy brand, like as far as a famous paint makers student line, because I swatched these out next to their in the review I did of these next to their uh, professional counterparts and these really held up well. I mean, look at that PV-19, it's gorgeous. So, um, so I'm a little leery. I'm a little leery to recommend a new set of these in case they've changed. But if you can find us, if you find a set at a thrift shop or something, snag it right up because it's probably the old kind and it's probably good. If anybody has recently purchased the Sennelier Le Petit Aquarelle student grade paints, let me know how you like them. Let me know how they are. Do they look, do your swatches look like this or do they look muted? Were they hard to, did you have to dig at the paint to get the color or was it really vibrant and robust? Please let me know because I'd love to keep recommending these paints. I think they're a great value. I paid $28 for the set of 24 and, uh, and I was really happy with them. This next one, which, and it's kind of odd because Schmika watercolor is not my favorite, but the Schmika Academy, I think is actually a really good student grade. Um, the colors are nice and bright. This is the, the standard set of 12 colors. You've got um, a warm and a cool version of each primary. I like that. You've got a couple greens. You've got a couple browns. I wish it was more of like a neutral brown because the sepia is kind of blackish. And the, um, the English red is just kind of red. I wish it was just like a good burnt umber or burnt sienna. I could do without the black. Um, I could do without that green, honestly. Uh, I could I'd prefer a sap green or maybe, I don't know. I'm not crazy about that green. But anyway, it's still, it's a good mixing set. I found the, the colors were pretty good quality and uh, not bad. And I guess if you're in Germany, these are really affordable. They're not very common here in the United States and they can be kind of expensive. For some reason, Schmincke products are quite expensive here. 
but if you're in Europe and these are a good buy, then I would recommend them. Another product, which I wonder if they're somehow related, is Grumbacher Academy. Probably not, but I really like the Grumbacher Academy paints and they're very easy to come by. You can buy these at a lot of, well, I, I don't know if you still can, but they used to be available at um, a lot of big box craft stores. But they are, you can buy them by the tube, they have pigment information on them, the colors are nice and robust, they blend really well, they mix really well. They're a really nice student grade watercolor paint. I think they're much nicer than Cotman, and, um, and they have a good availability and you can definitely find them on Blick and Jerry's for, I think they're around, around four, under four dollars a tube, somewhere in that ballpark. And I, and I think it's a pretty good buy for these, quite honestly. And then you can just buy the colors that you want. And um, and that's really nice. So Grumbacher Academy, I like it. I never used Grumbacher's Finest, except I heard that Blick's Artist Grade paint was made by, was the same as Grumbacher's Finest, and I only bought one tube of that, and I didn't really like it. So I don't know. It could be one of those situations where they do a really good student range, but their pro range is not so hot. But Grumbacher Academy student paints, I, I like them. And uh, I would say equivalent to those previous two would be the Van Gogh watercolors. These really can't be beat either. Um, you can you buy them by the tube. They got pigment information. They're very transparent. They flow nicely. They're just a beautiful paint and um, you can get them half pans. This is a purple set that somebody gave me, the pink and purple set, uh, which I thought was kind of fun. And then I've just got some open stock tubes here that uh, they performed very well. Uh, this would, this and this set, the Van Gogh, or this line, the Van Gogh watercolors, is made by Royal, Royal, is it Royal Talons? I think it's made by Royal Talons. They also have a line called Art, Art Creation, which is not bad, but um, I don't know why they do that when they have Van Gogh, and Van Gogh is a great student grade, student grade line. They also have, uh, they make an artist's watercolor, which I've never tried, but their Van Gogh line is really good, and a lot of professional artists actually use the Van Gogh, so I wouldn't have any qualms recommending that. It's, it's as good as a grown... Actually, you know what? I think I might like the Van Gogh better than the, um, the Grumbacher. I mean, the, uh, goodness gracious. I think, actually, I think I do like the Van Gogh better than Grumbacher Academy or Schmincke Academy. So, Van Gogh, definitely. Around $4 a tube at any of your major, uh, uh, online retailers. You don't see it too much in stores unless it's an independent art store. Now, these next few are actually, I believe, all the same company. So there is, uh, there's a company called Superior, which makes, um, which I think make the Art Whale tubes. They also have pans and um, these paints from Artsy and this set from Altenew. And I've heard the Etcher set and this pan set from um, Art Whale. I believe we're all the same. And I think this is a great student set, quite frankly. The drawback is you uh, can't get you can't get open stock version. Like you can't just go buy a pan of that color if you run out. So that would be the big drawback, but I think the paint's pretty good. I think it's decent. I have noticed though with newer uh, paints that I got from suspectedly superior, there's more cracking and flaking on the pans. And I think they may have changed their binder or maybe they, you know, are trying to cut back in costs. But as of yet, I've really enjoyed the, uh, the products that are from made by superior. And, oh, that's just a metallic set from Altenew. But the Altenew set is actually really well put together. Wait for a sale. Um, Altenew, I think, was charging $50 for the set of 24. Artsy was charging, like, $20 for their set of 24, which is about identical, the same quality, the same paint. And then Art Whale was charging about $40 for their set of 48. So, the, and uh, the this set of 48 I feel like is copying the Paul Rubens set. These are not as good as the Paul Rubens. A lot of people think they're the same. They are not the same. They are not nearly the same. I've swatched them out side by side. They are not the same, but they are not bad for the price. Up next would be another one from a mass, uh, from a large brand, and this would be Daler Rowney's Aquafine range. And I think these are a pretty good solid student grade paint. I actually teach my workshops with these. I got a good deal at Jerry's when they had a closeout on their sets of 24. And I bought 20 of them and I use those for teaching and I just refill them as needed. But um, they're decent, they're decent student grade paints. They have pigment information available and I really like that. And uh, yeah, they're nothing 
crazy. They're not going to knock your socks off too much, but they get the job done and they're reliable. So yeah, that's the Aquafine from Dale Rowney. They're also pretty easy to find. I think a lot of the big box stores sell Aquafine. Although the big box craft stores, they are so terribly overpriced and you can get any of the superior type pans for less. So like definitely I'd say get the pretty excellent Miliang paints here over the De La Rowney in a heartbeat. I was able to get the, actually I got these sets of 24 for ten dollars a piece and i bought 20 of them so i mean that was a big selling point for them but if that wasn't available something like the um pretty excellent sets would have been great now uh i recommend these paints but they are definitely at the tail end of my major brand student grade lines and that would be windsor newton cotman paints i have no problem recommending common paints. I have used common paints a lot. I do feel like they're a little bit weaker now than they used to be. They used to be made in, in England, then they were made in France, and now they're made in China. And I believe they're made by the company Phoenix because I've swatched out the Phoenix colors side by side. I've looked at the, their brochures. Everything is uncanny, uncannily similar. So for right down from this light fast ratings to the pigment numbers to them swatching out identically on paper, save yourself some money by the phoenix in my opinion but um this is a common set of 40 and when you get the common set of 40 you get five you get 40 unique colors and five duplicates so it's actually 45 colors they give you two what do they give you two of? I think like yellow ochre or raw sienna one of those uh two ultramarines two lizard and crimsons two burnt siennas and maybe two it two whites or two blacks I'm not sure but you get you get uh, you get doubles of those popular colors and yeah, they're Cotman. We all know Cotman. Cotman is decent. It's easy to find. It's made by Windsor Newton. Now the Cotman equivalents, uh, there are many. There are many. So let's look at the actual, I'll show you the Phoenix first. Where's my Phoenix swatch? This is my Phoenix watercolor. Oh yeah, Phoenix has tubes as well. So this is a Phoenix watercolor tube, Phoenix watercolor pans, or Cotman pans or Cotman tubes. I would consider them all the same. And in that same vein, other dupes of this would be the Zen Art Supplies, the ones in the 12 half pan tins. Those seem to be the exact same paints. The Mia Hemi Diamond set of paints seems to be the same, except this is way cheaper, so I would definitely go for the Mia Hemi watercolors. We've got the Phoenix, and that comes in 12, 24, or 48. And so the Phoenix actually has eight colors that Common doesn't have, and those eight colors don't have light fastness ratings or pigment information, which is, or it has pigment information, no light fastness rating. So this is the Phoenix 48 set. And this is the Windsor and Newton 48 set. So these colors that are circled are ones that you won't find in the, um, in the Windsor and Newton range. But they do have pigment information, which is which is nice. So, so that's another reason I would just do the 48 set of Phoenix. Save yourself 10 bucks and get eight extra colors. But yeah, I think it's the exact same thing. It seems to be for me. And then there was the Premier that AC Moore used to sell, which I think are the same. So yeah, I wonder if I have a Phoenix brochure too, because I could show you how similar the brochures are. Like, oh right here, here's one. This is the Phoenix brochure. This is one of the Cotman brochures. And if I flip it over, the pigment information matches pretty much identically for most of the colors. Yep, hold it up. If it's a color they have, the pigment information matches identically, which is crazy. And there's eight, col eight more colors in that set. So Phoenix, Cotman, Mia Himi, um, Zen Art, yeah, you're getting the same thing, except for the Zen Art Nomad set. I don't think you can get that one anymore, but, um, but that one is, that one's different, but the uh, 12 half pan sets, they're, they're the same. That one's no longer available, but yeah, that would, I mean, it's fine. The common paint is good. There's nothing wrong with it at all, but I would say, given the chance, there are some better, better things to pick. And then these last few ones I don't recommend. Um, starting off, we've got the uh, Master's Touch watercolors, and these are the same as the Doodle Hog watercolors. They're chalky. Um, 
the colors are pretty vibrant, which I like, but they have an awful odor to them. When, you, when you're using them, they could give you a headache. If you're sensitive to smells at all, they are very chemical. They have this very chemical smell every time you use them. And when you open up the tin, it's just kind of like an assault to your senses. It's this awful, awful smell. The colors themselves aren't that bad, but they just reek. And so I would stay away from the Doodle Hog and the Master's Touch. Doodle Hog 48 set anyway. They had a 36 set that was actually the same quality as like the Superior watercolors, but people said they changed that. So uh, I would just, to be safe, maybe avoid it. Uh, then we have the Meaden set of 48 pans. Again, they're all right. They don't stink, which is nice. The colors are pretty decent, but um, you definitely they were $30 for a set of 48. And it just seems like for... 36 for $20. I just find that was a better a better deal. They're okay, but there's no pigment information and it's I don't know, they didn't knock my socks off. They weren't that great to paint with. They're fine, but with all the choices we have, why go for fine when you can get something that's really good? And then finally, one I do not recommend is the Arteza set of a uh, set of I think it's 36. There's no good ultramarine blue. It's these are tough to mix colors with. Um you do have a good amount of colors there, but look at all the neutrals. I don't know. It's not a good variety for all the colors that are in there. They're just kind of math. They don't move very well. They're just, they're overpriced in my opinion. And I would definitely avoid the Arteza uh, watercolors. So their tube watercolors are not that bad. The tube watercolors are okay, but the, the uh, half pans, I would definitely avoid them in my opinion, but you may think differently. So let me know in the comments below, what's your favorite student grade watercolor. Uh, all those fan palettes, I recommend those. Those are all made by Superior. They're very similar to the Superior pans that I was showing you, like the Art Wheel pans and the um, Alta New pans. Those are fine. I really like those. Those fan palettes are tough to find now. They, the regular one is still out there, but all those other ones have seemed to have gone away. But um, yeah, there you have it. I hope you found this useful. If you have a question on any student paints that I didn't mention, you can let me know. Um, I'll link up the best ones. Uh, at least I'll try to remember to so you can find them if you want to. Blick is generally going to be your best price or Jerry's um, or if it's a set Amazon, like something like this is only going to be available on Amazon. But uh, if you're going for tubes so that you can like replace them as needed, then I would definitely recommend checking out Blick, maybe Jerry's Artorama. Uh, or any of your in-person art stores if you're lucky enough to have an in-person art store. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.